problem deals with the forces that one feels when they're on an elevator. And we're going to take a vernier force probe on the elevator with us and see if we can figure out how far the elevator travels just based on these forces. So we take a crate, we put it on the force plate, we hit the up button on the elevator, and then we hit start. The elevator door closes, the elevator starts accelerating upward, reaches a constant speed, and then stops. Okay, when we take a look at the graph that we collected, we can see the different regions that show the elevator's motion at different times. So let's highlight each of these different regions and make sure we understand what was happening. So in this first region, the elevator was at rest. This was us, this was the crate on the force probe waiting for the elevator to start. This is a key region because we can see that the force normal at this time was 600 newtons. That will allow us to find the mass of the crate and that will be approximately 60 kilograms. If we want a more accurate reading, we should use the acceleration due to gravity as 9.8 instead of just estimating it at 10. This next region, we could see that the force normal was greater than it was when the elevator was at rest. This is because we're accelerating upward. So the crate needed an extra upward force in order to accelerate along with the elevator. So we take our force net, which would be normal minus gravity over mass. We now know the mass of the, of the crate in the elevator was 60. We know that the force gravity, which doesn't change, was 600. And we can now read from our display that the force normal was around 625. From this, we can get the acceleration of the elevator. Once we have the acceleration of the elevator, we can then find the speed of the elevator when it reaches its top speed based on the time. We can see that the acceleration region lasted for two seconds. So what you do is you take that region where it was accelerating, you make your list of variables like we always do. The initial speed of the elevator was zero. The final speed is what we're trying to determine. The acceleration is the value we get from our net force equation from Newton's second law, and the time is two seconds. So we now have our three variables. We can solve for the final speed of the elevator and also the distance the elevator traveled while accelerating. This next region is where the elevator was moving at a constant speed. So we could then use our equation velocity equals displacement over time. Use the final speed that you got from the region that we just looked at. The time for this region goes from the five second mark to the nine second mark, so that's four seconds, and solve it for the distance traveled. In this last region, the elevator is once again accelerating. The acceleration will now be a negative value since we're slowing down. And what we're going to do is start with an initial velocity that was equal to the final velocity from the first region. The final speed will now be zero. The acceleration we're going to determine using Newton's law again. And the time is once again going to be two seconds. Okay, this time when we write our acceleration equation, our force normal is going to be about 575. Our force gravity is 600, and our mass again is around 60. Once we get this acceleration, we can plug it in here. We can solve for our final speed. Actually, our final speed is zero, so we solve for our final displacement. And then if we add up the displacement in region three, region two, and region one, we can get the distance that the elevator traveled while we were on it. So simply by analyzing this force graph, 
we can determine the distance traveled by the elevator.